How's it going guys? Today we are talking about our everyday carry, why it stays the same, why it changes, and what elements can tip those scales. Now, to have this conversation, I have brought in the most practical practitioner of the EDC ethos I've ever met, my good buddy Jamie. How's it going, man? Great, I was gonna ask you how it's going, but like we see each other all the time. We see each other all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been sitting here like setting stuff up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, if you guys don't know, Jamie is the other half of this channel. So, I mean, he's a camera wizard, he's an editing guru. Chances are, if you dig the channel, it has a lot to do with this guy because he makes he makes everything look real good. I'm speechless. He has been kicking around the knife industry for a while, so you probably do know Jamie's a bug out man. And when I say Jamie's a bug out man, he's been carrying a bug out in his pocket for four-ish, five-ish, basically since day one of the bug out, the OG blue bug out. Jamie's had a bug out in his pocket. Now, the bug out's a great EDC knife. I think most people aren't gonna argue with that, right? Great EDC knife. However, that's a long time to carry one knife. You've got 30 knives in your knife collection. You've been in the knife industry for a while. And you know, we get discounts in the knife industry, a lot of free stuff in the knife industry. So why the bug out? Why the bug out? It was interesting, like when it first got announced, it was like just as I was kind of sneaking my way into the knife industry and I saw it and I was like, it's simple and I think that's the one for me. So I remember seeing it kind of before it was available and all that stuff. Um, and then it came out and I got it in my hand and I was just like, you know what? I think this is the one. So I bought it. I think this is one of the first knives that I actually truly purchased. That's okay. saying something. Cause when you work in the industry again, you know, like you, you don't buy a lot of knives in the industry usually, right? Yeah. Um, and we'll get to it, but that's not the only bug out that you've actually purchased. Correct. <laughs> Correct. So I don't actually purchase a whole lot of knives um, and yeah. they just they just kind of flow to you when you're in this industry so <laughs> but also again Jamie's a very practical guy we've been doing this about the same mm -hmm. amount of time you guys have seen my knife collection it's ridiculous it's absolutely silly how many mm -hmm. knives I have like 200 or something yeah. Jamie has 30 and that's like <laughs> because he gets gifts and stuff like that so right. very practical <laughs> I don't think I'm kind of the very like traditional use case when it comes to kind of the whole EDC crowd right there's a lot of blue collar stuff going on ranchers farmers that type of thing it's kind of your like traditional EDC you know work knife type people right so for me I work at computers I do cameras I, I, I do outdoor stuff too but this is kind of like my main bum around everyday knife I think the reason that is is because of the slimness of the lightness I wear shorts a lot um, so having a big heavy knife in like some athletic shorts is not really an ideal thing. Um, we'll get to that in a little yeah, bit too. Yeah, there's something to say about that. <laughs> uh, but there's a, there's a trade out there, right? So if you have something that, you know, is, is light and easy to carry, you're more likely to carry it. And as somebody that was newer to the knife industry, I wanted to make sure I was going to be carrying it around and it wasn't going to bug me. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of why I went with the with the original bug out was just kind of it was just this culmination of a bunch of different features that I really liked that ended up making its way into my pocket. And I kind of just fell in love with it. This isn't actually my blue one. I gave the blue one to my brother because I wanted to share the bug out love. Um, I think I think Jamie has converted a lot of people. Jamie and probably Kurt have converted a lot of people to the bug out and rightfully so. Yeah. I love the bug out. You know mm -hmm. I love the bug out. Yeah. So went with the blue bug out, ended up giving that one to my brother. It was kind of a birthday present because this one came to me. And this one is kind of special because this one, a good friend Hans, uh, no longer at Benchmade, but at Benchmade at the time, kind of gave this to me as we were doing this interesting video. I ended up getting the Ranger Green um, one. And this is kind of the bug out that stuck in my pocket for probably the longest, I think, was the Ranger Green one. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Me and Jimmy have worked together for a long time, so I, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I think you're right. So I ended up going with the Ranger Green one, had that for a while, and then I had probably the ultimate bug out, in my mind, come out, and that's the CF Elite one. So it's like DLC coated, you have the CF Elite handle, so they're a little bit stiffer than kind of the normal polymer ones. So this was like the ultimate bug out for me. So I ended up purchasing this one. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so yeah. I purchased two bug outs out of my three bug outs. This one is also a loner because I ended up losing this one a little <laughs> while back. Kind of losing. Kind of. I know where yeah. it is, but yeah, yeah. it's a long way away from here, and yeah. I need yeah. to go pick it up. And there was, there was kind of a half one in between this. 
right? Because you died a bug out. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it was the blue one, wasn't it? You the, died. You died a blue one. We did a video a while back. It was it was dying knives, and there, yeah. they had there's the mini bug out came out. Right? That's what it was. The yeah. mini bug out came out, and it came out in a white, and it came out in an orange. So it's right. like obviously white is a blank canvas. So we ended up yeah. uh, writ dying that. That's and right. It turned out beautifully. So I do have that one. It's not on the table here, but that one has made its way into my pocket occasionally, especially kind of in the short season. It doesn't quite fit my hand right. Yeah. But it's just small, right? That's how I am with the, with a medium, even a medium sized hand. I think yeah. we're both medium sized hand. Like it's just a little too small. Like it's got me. everything you love about the regular size bug out, but it just doesn't quite do it on the size front for my particular yeah, hand. For sure. Now, again, this, you know, a lot about the bug out because four years of experience and, and practicality carrying it, right? But really like it's, it's, that, it's that EDC ethos, right? Like it's the thing that fit what you needed at the time. It, it kind of perfectly slotted in. I mean, I know that you've put other knives in your pocket and they lasted like a day or two and you're like, no, the bug out's better, the bug out's better, the bug out's better, right? I think it's really interesting that you just like kept evolving every time they released one, right? Like you're like, oh, let's try this one, let's try this one. I'm, I'm gonna like, get a new knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a different bug out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think what's really interesting here too is you mentioned when you kind of were talking about EDC and stuff, I actually think that you're a prime candidate for EDC. Maybe we hang out too much and so you think of EDC as like some dummy with a big knife doing a bunch of dumb things all the time. Mm -hmm. But I actually think EDC, a lot of the guys, especially that use the word EDC, right? And we noticed this at Sturgis, while we were at Sturgis. If you haven't checked out our Sturgis pocket check video, check it out, a lot of fun. A lot of these guys that are kind of like blue collar, rough and tumble, whatever, I mean, they're just carrying whatever they have, right? Like they're not, and they're definitely not in a position to be like trading around knives that are like in the 150, $170 range to be like, oh, I'll try this one or I'll try this one, right? Um, but we've kind of had that advantage, which is kind of neat, right? Like yeah, to, to be able exactly. to try some different things out. Now, you mentioned shorts. Jamie's a big shorts guy. Again, a very big practical guy. Um, but you have, you do have some everyday needs where you need tools. Mm -hmm. So like what, like, let's talk on that a little bit. I'll show you that right Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right show, show us so, this. So, cause I mean, there's, this, there's, this was there's an the evolution happening, yeah, right? And that's, and that's what we're talking about is like, what are the elements that tip, right? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. So it was always just like, I needed just a flathead for tripod screws, yep. right? And I never had it on me. So we did a, a kind of a gift exchange thing yep. a while ago, yeah. but ended up getting uh, this little Gerber tool. And this has been in my pocket for a couple years yeah. at this yeah, point. Yeah, I, I got that for you like, yeah, probably three years mm -hmm. ago. And yeah, you've had it this yeah. whole time. And this is great, but it was pretty singular in its purpose, flathead for tripod screws. Right. Um, and it was, it was great, yeah. like it, it worked. That's like the majority of the things I need a tool for, <laughs> right. which is funny, right. um, but it, it really worked well for that like I don't use a bottle opener I rarely use the Phillips on this particular yeah. one yeah. Uh, just because it's kind of a, a wonky kind of little a thing one. yeah so but this worked very well for that and that was kind of the start of that hey I need more of a tool mm -hmm. in my pocket because yeah. like I'd take the spine of my knife and like <laughs> yeah. try it it just didn't he, he would literally like pull the bug out out and then take the spine of the bug out to like tighten stuff and I was like dude you're gonna cut yourself you're gonna mess your knife yeah. up like it was so definitely not ideal got him a little got him a little pocket tool because as a practical guy, I, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call Jamie a minimalist. I know you wouldn't take that title. No. But Jamie is very minimal in the things that he acquires and uses and carries. And so, yeah, like you carry, I was actually, it was kind of a compliment to me. I was like, oh, he's actually carrying it. Like, cause yeah. uh, Jamie will get stuff and just like, oh, thanks. And like put it on a shelf, right? Like, yeah. But he actually carried it, which was cool. And, <laughs> and then, yeah, in the last six months, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so me and Jamie worked together on our nine to five. And then we also worked together on this project. Yeah. So unfortunately for Jamie, we spend a lot of time together. Mm. And I think I might've had a little influence on you here. Like, maybe. And also we're in a lot of stupid situations because we hang out so much now that I think that you found that you needed maybe a couple more tools in your pocket. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which leads us to. Which leads us to, yeah. So <laughs> I've had this for a while, Long but time, I haven't yeah. really carried it. So this is the, the P2 and kind of the way, reason why this found its way into my pocket was I was doing a lot of GoPro stuff like a lot of GoPro stuff. Right. Yep. And it was GoPro stuff on vehicles that were going quite fast. <laughs> yeah, we, we on our nine to five, we work with some interesting things. Yeah. So we're working with Harley on some stuff. And then we're working with a, a place here at the track in, in Utah with cars that are literally going like 150 miles an hour, like Porsches and Lamborghinis yeah. and stuff, which is wild. Um, so yeah, yeah. GoPros. <laughs> so we're getting a lot of GoPro stuff and like they have those, those kind of plastic screw head things that you can hand tighten it. But like hand tightening just wasn't doing it for some of those things. Cause you'd be vibrating and they'd be going Going fast and be hitting yeah, the wind like at 100 miles an hour and like yeah, throwing maybe. GoPros, not off, but like folding them back, flip backwards, <laughs> and all that type of thing. So I end up throwing this in my pocket for kind of the pliers because you can take this needle nose and you can kind of get it in the screw and you can turn it yep. and really crank it down. Now I know there's GoPro wrenches and stuff, but that's kind of like 
another thing to carry on the keychain and, and do all that. But. Well, and that's an interesting thing, right? When we're talking about like our EDC, like the things that change, the things that stay the same, reasons things would change. Mm -hmm. Like you could see a use for the wrench, but like how much utility does that really have, right? And it's like, oh, it doesn't have as much utility as maybe say something that's more exactly. of a full package, right? So I also use this for like the pliers is nice. You can get your jaws in there, you can cut zip ties mm -hmm. and just grab things, bend things, do all that yep. type of thing more than you can with just a very singular purpose GoPro yeah. wrench. A little wrench, which is cool. I mean, but again, like yeah. why add it to your kit mm -hmm. if it's not going to do... I, I'm more of a multi guy myself, yeah. right? Like, yeah. So some people might be saying, well, Jamie, you said you don't like heavy stuff in your pocket. And I don't. <laughs> I don't like heavy stuff in my pocket. But there's this, like, there's this weird, like, sliding scale of, like, is it useful enough that it overrides your, you know, dislike of bulky things in your pocket? Yep. And at this point, it, it did. So I ended up using the pliers for stuff like that. Obviously, I use the, uh, I'd find myself not using my keychain tool as much anymore. Because there's a, like, there's also an occasion when we're working on a nine to five that we're in different vehicles. And I don't yeah. necessarily always have my keys on it because I don't need my keys. Yeah, we drive a lot of different things. Yeah. yeah. So I always have a flathead. And not just a flathead, but a one-handed flathead. Yeah, which so, is a big thing because you've got a camera in one hand, right? And then like you have to be able to get the tool out one-handed. That's huge for me. I, th I think there's a lot of people that are like, why, like what's the deal with the one-handed thing? Like yeah. you have two hands, like who cares? But like I'm always holding a camera, holding a tripod, holding something in my other hand. So I need to be able to pull yeah. it out of my pocket. The love them, it's great because you can kind of just take it push it and then, you know, yep. dial in whatever tool that you need. It's a lot of times just not feasible to put whatever I have down in my hand because it's a lot of times like a delicate piece of electronics. <laughs> Expensive so, delicate yeah. piece of electronics. Yeah, I'm just gonna chuck it on the asphalt. <laughs> yeah. So I've been toying around with the idea of obviously just carrying this without a knife too right. because this has a it has knife, knife blade on it. It's serviceable, it's a whatever, serviceable yeah, it's, blade. it's a whatever blade, yeah. yeah. So like there's, there's other tools here, like the scissors I use occasionally. Um, I don't use a ton of the tools on this side right. a lot. Um, but it's definitely got like, it, there's a lot of utility to this, which kind of overrode that discomfort or dislike of heavy things in right. my pocket. We really are together like most of the time. We're, we're probably together like 60 to eight hours a week mm -hmm. without exaggerating. Um, so I am interested on the like half day or one day I don't see you <laughs> every right. given week. Do you still carry it? I do. Okay, so just, I do. so this is just like, this is now every day, this is what you do. Yeah, doing. it's yeah. become kind of standard kit for me. And I don't know, like it's funny because like I, I carried a knife for forever. I didn't have a multi-tool, yeah. didn't do any of that stuff. Yeah. And I was like, I don't need that. Like I don't need that stuff. When you start carrying one of these, you start using it. Yep. It's weird. Yep. And this is the thing is, I remember it was when, cause I was the same for a long way too. Like I didn't carry a multi-tool on me every day, right? Mm -hmm. And then I got addicted to that compact, right? And I was like, Jamie, you gotta get this in your pocket, dude, this thing's awesome. And you're like, nah, dude, this isn't, I'm not gonna carry multiple, I'm not gonna carry multiple years. I'm not gonna carry, yeah. and then here you've landed. And that's the thing is, is like, I like, uh, I'm definitely stuck on that compact, but I'm always throwing different things in my pocket to see if something will, throw it over, right? Like, as you know, so we're doing a little something with Ben that will be coming soon to the channel. Uh, so Ben actually is a big fan of the Leatherman Squirt. Yeah. And uh, I'm a big fan of the Compact. So we've actually traded multi-tools and I've been carrying this thing recently. Watch that video, because there's a lot to be said about this. And I think Ben has a lot to say too. But like, yeah, trading things in and out, like I'm all about that, but you kind of like, you, again, practically, right? You just slowly like inched your way into this moment where you're like, I have no choice but to do this. Mm -hmm. And now that you're doing it, you're finding, wow, yeah. this is really useful. Actually. It is really useful. Like yeah. I had a burnt out light the other day where it's like, I don't have to go find the screwdriver. I have one in my pocket. Yep. So I just, you know, yep. take the set screws out, replace the light. Yep, exactly. Go. Yep. So, so that's kind of the tool aspect of the, what I'm carrying currently. So this is this is really in my pocket most of the time. There's like a couple occasions where it's like, I'm just gonna run to the store or whatever. I just throw a pocket knife in yeah. there. Yeah. Um, but most of the time I do end up carrying the free P2. Awesome, which is that's pretty way cool. awesome. And that kind of brings us to what I think, again, when we're talking about the, the elements that tip us for carrying one thing or another thing, you know, you never really carried a multi-tool, you kind of like inched your way into it and found reasons to carry that multi-tool and now it's part of your everyday kit, right? Um, but you are really committed to a particular knife. And now like, I'm gonna say dethroned. I know Jamie is just too practical. He's gonna he's gonna correct me. But I'm gonna say you found a knife that have de that has dethroned the bug out at least momentarily. Momentarily. <laughs> and uh, this is a big deal. So like, let's talk about first off the knife, and then we probably should put a little caveat, and then let's talk about why. Mm, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Dethroned. That's an interesting word. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Let's not go with that. I'm always up here. I'm just you know this is how I am. We'll just say this is what I'm going with. 
you know, just in the in the current moment, just to yeah. kind of try to try some new stuff yeah. out. So like, so this is the Wii banner, and you might notice that it's that looks little, different. It's right? a little different. Now, before we jump into this, though, I do want to make sure there's a clarifier here. So. If you guys have been watching the channel, you know that we had a big moment on the channel recently, which is so exciting. Our friends Ben and Athena are our first channel sponsors over at NAFS. Uh, definitely go check them out. This is one of Ben's design. Ben didn't tell us to put this on. This is not a sponsored video. Our last Leatherman video, we had a lot of people asking like, oh, is this sponsored by Leatherman? No, it's not. But if you're a company you want to sponsor us, let's, let's do that. That yeah, would be awesome. We're sure. all about that. But uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that that's clear. Not sponsored. This has actually been in Jamie's pocket. This is not planned or anything of that nature. Now, uh, kind of a cool thing uh, when we talked about sponsorship and we talked about the channel, a lot of you out there wanted an opportunity to help sponsor the channel as well. So we have set up a Patreon. Uh, we were kind of hesitant, to be honest, because we just didn't like really know, but we heard from a lot of you that you were interested. So this video is actually sponsored by you guys. If you'll jump over to Patreon and uh, support us, support the channel. Uh, you're putting gas in the tank. You're helping us buy knives for different videos that we're doing and things like that. You also get a little say in what we're doing on the table. If you support the Patreon, you can tell us what knives you'd like to see. You can tell us what videos you'd like to see, which would be a lot of fun. Also, uh, we need a table. So <laughs> help us help us buy a table, guys. I'm gonna give you, right now, we're gonna give you a B shot of the situation on this table right now. So that's how we work every day we do this thing. So help us buy a table on Patreon right now. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so all the sponsorship crap's out of the road. So, we banter. I think this is a really great knife. It, it literally has nothing to do with Ben being the designer. Like, I, I don't care who designed this knife. I don't care if this was just a Wii in-house design, like the Elementum, for example, right? Like, I don't care. Like, the banter, I think, is a really good knife, and I have carried, personally, I've edc the bantered quite a bit. I know that you had tried it out a little bit as well, but you kind of took it to the next level, and I'm kind of in love with what you've done here. I think yeah. this banter is primo. I think I've made the perfect banter. I think so, like, dude. That's, that's subjective. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So this is a wee banter, but it's different, right? I decided that I like the banter, but it was a little blocky for me. Great. Um, and I've had, I've owned the banter since basically day one. Yeah, um, I, th I think both of us, we both carried it before it released. You might have had a pre- yeah, I, I carried, I carried, I think both of us carried a prototype. We around. both carried a prototype, so yeah. I've definitely been, I'm intimately familiar yeah. with the banter. I was the first person to cut my finger with a banter. Just a little history there for you. <laughs> You're, you should be honored. <laughs> well, I was unsticking a I was unsticking a sprinter from like you know three feet of mud buried to the axle. It's perfect. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so banter a little blocky for me, um, yep. but I kind of got to this point where we were at Ben's place and he had uh, a banter rigged out in these unlock composite scales, the texture, the contouring, and everything. I was like, ooh. I need to try that. So I ended up going to Unlock Composites and getting some of these textured carbon fiber scales, put them on here, and I was like, okay, I can do this thing. And like, there's this kind of weird, like, I like Ben, like, it's a good knife. You shouldn't necessarily, like, just carry something because you like the person that designed it, but like, that's icing on the cake, too. It is. So I was like, I kind of got a lot, it's got a lot of things going for it. So I put the unlock composite scales on it. Uh, ben ended up giving me this Glow Rhino Tritium thumb stud. Which is cool. Which is so cool. Like it glows in the dark, like I think Tritium glows for like 15 years or something like that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty nuts. I basically have this all blacked out glowing banter. Another thing too about these unlock composite scales is the fact that they have a little bit more of a cutout for your thumb for the liner. Yep. Which I think just kind of pushes it over that edge of usability. Like yep. it, it just feels great to use. Like it's so smooth and snappy. Yeah, it's, it's lighter, it's contoured, and you have the cutout. Like mm -hmm. meh. Um, I remember like, so Ben had Ben had some of these scales and I think he might've had an early version of them because the weave was a little different, right? Because this is, this is a, is this carbon fiber or? Yeah, yeah it's carbon fiber, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so uh, Ben had a, a, an issue, or not an issue, he had a version of these scales. And I don't know if it was like a different process or whatever it was, but they were a little bit different. To be honest, it wasn't my jam. I was like, okay, cool, like it's nice, it's light, like, but I didn't, I didn't like the way it felt in hand and I'm not a big carbon guy, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you got this, I was like, oh cool, it's the unlock composite scales, like they're cool, but like not my thing. And then you hand it to me and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> this changes everything. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. And it, like, I, I love like blacked out knives. I think they're yeah. fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of just did it for me. Yeah, it's lighter, it's contoured, you have the cutout. I mean, this is, yeah, it's a perfect banter, right? Yeah. Also, I think that if, uh, you know, I, th I think it's pretty well known, like Ben steals knives, right? Mm -hmm. I think if I think if there's a, a, a theme that I think with you is Jamie gets knives given to him. <laughs> a lot of them. <laughs> I have a secret. I have I have a bad, terrible, horrible, no good secret. What's that? I, I did not pay for this banter. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. 
I did pay for the scales. <laughs> you did pay for the scales. I did pay for the scales. <laughs> Even the thumb stud. Ben's just like, oh, here you go. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, I don't want a thumb stud. How do I buy one? <laughs> so, so yeah. So it's basically the Leatherman and the Banter that are in my in my pocket currently. Yeah. And like you, you had mentioned like, oh, dethrone the bug. I don't think it necessarily dethroned the bug out. I think like from just a usability and like just general EDC standpoint, like mm. the bug out I think might still be like king of the roost. Right. But like there's there's an element of like, hey, I got to customize this. Like one of my good friends made it. Like it's all blacked out. It's actually a good knife. Yeah, it's a right. fantastic knife. Yep. Like there's kind of that like weird cacophony of elements that are in this knife that allow me to like stick it in my pocket and really enjoy it. For sure, for sure. So and so that's an interesting thing is, is I think with the with the P2 we can really see like okay like here's this evolution right that tipped the scales to you like changing up your EDC here right and like my personal philosophy is is like I carry a lot of different stuff because I'm always interested in like what's the thing right like what's the thing that's just gonna like nail it right mm -hmm. and uh, I've kind of landed on a couple things I mean like my Phoenix light right like nothing has dethroned my Phoenix light. And I probably should get more lights in my pocket because that's actually something I'm really bad about. Um, but I try multi-tools all the time. I'm carrying different knives all the time. I mean, for example, like I've got this, uh, I got this Kaiser Deviant right now, right? I actually really like this thing a lot. And I know like for you, it's a little heavy, the materials, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But like, this thing is sweet. This thing is a really, really sweet knife. But like, I don't have like a knife that I'm like, yeah, this is the only one I'm gonna carry for four years, right? So we can see an evolution with kind of your multi-tool process here and like the elements that would change. What would you say, I mean, what, what do you think that the tipping scale is on this? Is, is it, was it the customizability? Was it all of the elements combined? Like, right, the, all the parts are greater than the whole. Like, what would you say, like, has made this be the thing that took the bug out and put it on the shelf for a minute? I mean, I think it, it was just the combination of all the individual pieces. Like, there's a custom customizability and kind of having, not necessarily a one of a kind, but like, no, not a lot of people are gonna have that in their pocket. It's right? a very, unique, like, yeah, very there, unique There's yeah. two elements of customization to that knife that mm -hmm. I really enjoyed, um, and there was like a uniqueness factor to it. Cool. So that was a that was a factor. Like, I really like the banter. I think it's got like an incredible snappy action. Yeah. Like, I mean, we makes a great knife. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a fantastic quality knife. So there was like the quality aspect of it as well, and like this, you know, you got nice contours now instead of the blockiness. So that would that removed kind of a little bit of a gripe that I had about the banter for me personally, right? So um, yeah, it was it was a combination of a bunch of different factors. It yeah. wasn't just one thing. Yeah, for sure. Like they so, just added up and they kind of just right. got you to that tipping point. Right, for sure. So the, the, the parts are greater than the whole, right? Mm -hmm. that, that was kind of the that was kind of the thing. Exactly. Interesting. I, I just think it's really awesome to like see this evolution here. And I think that what's really cool about it is it's like putting a microscope on I think all of our brains, right? Like because Jamie's so practical, I think he's such a great case study. <laughs> I'm gonna treat you like you're a subject in like a study right now. I think that he's such a great case study in like how all of us eventually get there, right? Like I'm a bit of a like dog chasing a car, right? Like I'm just gonna like, oh, that's pretty. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, that's got a material like, and I'm gonna get that and carry it. Um, and so like kind of both, both ends of the spectrum, right? I don't think I'm as much of like a crow as Kurt is when he sees something shiny and he's no. just like, gotta have it. That's, that's hard to be. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. Kurt's probably the master at that and like, we definitely are gonna get Kurt on the channel and like have a conversation about something. I don't know what, but it's we're getting Kurt on the channel because I love that dude. And I, and I think for me, like it really boils down to like what we carry in our pockets. And I think this is a key tenant that I, I sometimes is lost in some of the bling, right? And some of the like clout of the EDC world, but also bling and clout could factor into this, right? What we carry in our pockets is very much based on what are we actually doing? Right? Like, what are we actually doing and using? Because I'm a big user, you're a big user. Um, and, and I guess bling, I, like I kind of wanted to harsh it, but now that I'm talking about it, I actually think that, that the bling and the clout are an element of why you would carry something in your pocket. Sure. Right? And, it, and it's these types of considerations that I think are like so important to like everyday carry. And it's one thing I, I love nerding out about it so much is, is I just love like specializing, right? And I also love being prepared. And like EDC is that perfect intersection of like specializing and being prepared. And like, again, like bling, clout, right? Like what are you carrying? You know, that whole thing, right? Well, it's like, yeah, have a tool, yeah. have the tool do a thing, but it could be cool too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, right? Like cool knife for sure. Cool knife, right? But like, 
I kind of customized this and I got a story with it and like kind of cooler knife for that reason, right? A like, regular banner will do the exact same thing that that knife will, exactly. but it won't look as cool. <laughs> and it won't take a bug out of your pocket there regularly, you right? Like, there you yeah. go. So kind of interesting. Guys, thanks so much for following along while we talk through some of these ideas about why our EDC can change, how it changed and the elements that kind of get us there. I would love to hear if you have knives that you regularly carried for a long time, if you've changed up your, your carry recently, or even like some of your favorite EDC items are, because it's something that we're always looking at. It's something that as we continue to grow the channel, we love hearing from you guys. We're always down in the comments. So yeah, jump down in the comments, let us know, and uh, catch you on the next one.